Hello Nutfield, <clears throat> I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're not too fed up with being in isolation. It's uh, it's not very nice, is it? Um, but we have to do it, it's necessary. Um, so I hope that uh, we can all still remain connected. I will phone round to as many of you that are in and leave a message if you're not in um, and see how you are. But please do get in touch with me if you need anything so i thought i'd be called matins on this the fifth sunday of lent dearly beloved brethren the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of almighty god our heavenly father but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly for grace, saying unto me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against our holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance in his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last day we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, the Lord's name be praised. Our psalm today is Psalm 86. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve thou my soul, for I am holy. My God, save thy servant that putteth his trust in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I will call daily upon thee. Comfort the soul of my servant, 
for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and gracious, and of great mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, Lord, unto my prayer, and ponder the voice of my humble desires. In the time of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou hearest me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, there is not one that can do as thou doest. O na all nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things, thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. O knit my heart unto thee, that I may fear thy name. I will thank thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and will praise thy name for evermore. For great is thy mercy towards me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the nethermost hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the congregations of naughty men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before their eyes. But thou, O Lord God, art full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, plenteous in goodness and truth. O turn thee then unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and help the son of thy handmaid. Show some token upon me for good, that they who hate me may see it, and be ashamed, because thou, Lord, hast holpen me, and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we say the Te Deum. <clears throat> We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only holy son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up for ever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name, ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy servant lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Our um, reading today is from St John's Gospel. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet on her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, The illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, 
he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to waken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, we will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God would give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. And so we say the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. 
He hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the Most High, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we declare our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but thou only thou, O Lord, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, Almighty God, mercifully to look upon thy people, that by thy great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore, both in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all the sorts of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, 
to do always that is right in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so I'm going to share with you my, my thoughts on um, this fifth Sunday of Lent. To get it up. So I wonder <clears throat> if you've ever thought all is lost, it's hopeless, and that's it. One week into surviving the lockdown we have found ourselves in, and we are dealing, we're all dealing with it in very different ways. Some are enjoying the enforced stay at home, especially with the good weather. They have been doing the garden, going out for their one long walk or cycle ride and then perhaps even coming home, having a glass of wine and catching up on their favourite box set. But others are struggling, are really struggling, being told that they can't go out, that they can't have friends in. Struggling with not being able to have friends and wider family at the funerals of their loved ones struggling to get food, struggling with feeling scared every time they see another person. For many, the reality of barely one week into this has been an astonishing eye-opener. No food on the shelves of supermarkets after you've queued for hours to get into one, unable to get delivery slots from supermarkets, and when you do, they can't deliver what you want anyway. And if they deliver, do you wipe everything down with debtor wipes and that's if you've still got some. And this is the first weekend of lockdown. Most people I've spoken to this week are finding amazing acts of kindness and camaraderie from their neighbours, which has restored their faith in human beings. But what about their faith in God? When there has been a national or international crisis in the past, churches have played major roles in being open and coordinating all sorts of initiatives to bring God's love and comfort to those who are struggling. Churches have been open for prayer, allowing those who just want to light a candle an experience of the divine, which somehow gives a glimmer of hope that you know there's something bigger than us that can get us through this mess. Churches have acted as beacons of light and a focus for our hope. But our places of worship, our point of contact with the divine are close to us. For many, it feels as if God has shut the door and that someone, somehow, they can't reach him and he can't reach us. I know that some feel abandoned and are angry with God. In our gospel reading, which by the way will be heard by most Christian communities around the world, we have this very real human tragedy being played out in front of us. This is the stuff of life with all its anguish, love, heartache, stress and worry. And people say that Christianity is boring or irrelevant. Yet here, amid the pain and turmoil, Jesus weeps with his friends. Jesus is caught up in a real family crisis, one that affects him personally too. His friends Martha, Mary and Lazarus have become very special to Jesus. It seems that he felt comfortable in their home with their hospitality. So when Mary and Martha find themselves in the terrible situation of their brother falling gravely ill, they naturally send word to their friend Jesus to help them. Now Jesus doesn't go immediately saying that the illness will not end in death and that it will result in God's Son being glorified through it. Jesus is probably a day's journey away, so by the time he's got the message, it's already a day late. If Jesus had gone immediately, he would have been two days behind. Now when Jesus finally does arrive, both Mary and Martha separately talk to Jesus. Why the heck didn't you get here earlier? If you'd been here, you could have saved him. He wouldn't have died. Or words to that effect. Now, I can imagine the two sisters caring for their sick brother 
watching him deteriorate and eventually die, asking themselves, where is Jesus? Why isn't he here? He has, a, has he abandoned us? And that image resonated with me as I considered just how many must be thinking and asking the same question. Pope Francis addressed this question as well, saying that the situation we are in is like a thick darkness that has gathered over our squares, our streets and our cities. In this situation, he said, we feel afraid and lost, like the disciples whose boats, boat was in danger of sinking while Jesus slept at the stern. The disciples asked Jesus if he cares whether they die. I'm sure there are many today thinking the same questions as the disciples, the same questions as Mary and Martha. God, why aren't you here? Do you even care? But Pope Francis says these words would have shaken Jesus because he, more than anyone, cares about us. When Jesus arrives in Bethany, just outside Jerusalem, he is met by Martha along with a crowd of friends and neighbours who have come to comfort the sisters. Mary is in the house grieving her brother's death, but Martha goes out to meet Jesus. She is upset, perhaps angry, and yet has a deep faith that Jesus will resolve this. There would have been a great deal of wailing and outcries of grief. This was not a pleasant experience for Jesus to walk into, and it seems that he is deeply moved by it. When Mary realises that Jesus has arrived in the village, she gets up and runs out to meet him. We're told that Jesus is deeply moved and in spirit and troubled, that this is a very intense description. It seems that Jesus is angry as well as upset about the situation. And we don't know why Jesus is angry, but perhaps it is something to do with being faced with the reality of his two close friends, so utterly grief-stricken that even though they totally believe and trust in him, they are still broken by this. Bereavement often poses the strongest challenge to our faith, and Jesus comes face to face with this reality. Jesus faces the final enemy and the effects it has on us, and weeps. He weeps with Mary and Martha. Now the outbreak of COVID-19 has brought the world face to face with the horror of death in the most extreme way, with over 30,000 deaths from COVID-19 so far. I am sure Jesus weeps over all of them. Martha and Mary both say to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Somehow, they are both recognising that Jesus is the source of life and healing. Now, even though Lazarus has been dead for four days and all hope seems lost, Jesus goes to his friends and turns things around. He turns the old order on its head and brings new life, new hope to the grave. I am the resurrection and the life, says Jesus. We know that this story is the beginning of the journey towards the cross for Jesus, a cross that would result in resurrection and eternal life to all. A resurrection and life that challenges the world's way of thinking, the world's way of being, and promises life, hope, and peace. All I've been thinking about this week is how everything in the world has been turned upside down. Here in the UK, businesses, shops, restaurants, places of worship closed. Restrictions on our movements, changes to our how we shop, travel, work, worship and play. Our whole way of being has changed overnight because of COVID-19. More and more of us are in lo a lockdown which makes some feel as though they are in a cold black tomb, just like Lazarus. Yet when Jesus is still outside the village, Martha calls her sister Mary and says, the master is here. He is present. He is with us. Because of the cross and resurrection, we have the assurance of his presence with us still. He is present in our lives. He is present in every aspect of our life and calls us, each one of us by name, 
wanting us to respond to his presence with the same eagerness that Mary did. Living in the light of his presence with us is living with life itself. We can do that even if we are living in lockdown and the anxiety of catching COVID-19. It's not pleasant having restrictions imposed on us, yet there have been so many blessings. People have really tried to find new ways of being community, of being society, of helping, of caring. Many of us are learning to stop and be with our families, of phoning our friends, enjoying our gardens, of being careful with the food we use. We are even trying to be church in a new way, which is not a bad thing either. Life in the light of his presence is life that is marked by peace, joy, hope. Whether we are in lockdown or not, I hope that when we do finally come out the other side of this nightmare and society's freedoms are restored, we retain the best parts of this and continue to value what really matters. We will all face situations that will seem hopeless and I'm sure there will be many more in the weeks and months ahead, but knowing Christ is present with us and responding to his presence will always bring meaning, always bring blessings and always bring hope. Amen. <clears throat> so let us pray, and I'm going to use the prayers and the form of intercession that the Church of England has, has used, as printed for us at this very difficult time. So in response to Lord hear us, we say Lord graciously hear us. <clears throat> Let us pray to God, who alone makes us work, dwell in safety. For all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. And we especially pray for our Prime Minister and others and to Prince Charles who has COVID-19 themselves, that they will make a speedy recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all our emergency services, for the police, the paramedics, the fire engine, the fire brigade, our social workers and our medical teams that through their skill and insights many will be restored to health. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, for all of us, we say the grace and pray for each other as we do so. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <clears throat>